Hello everybody, it's David here today and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to collect and analyze AWS CloudWatch logs with AI powered elastic observability. Now we live in a world today of digital transactions, right? Everybody's logging in on their mobile phones to their core banking systems and they're transferring money to their friends or their online shopping. Digital transactions essentially dominate our lives these days. And every time a digital transaction happens, a little bit of observability data is created. In a, an AWS environment where you've got uh, enormous microservices with the ability to scale up on demand, the amount of observability data that's generated for each transaction that occurs can be quite significant. So where are you gonna put all of that data? Well, luckily, we can get a lot of that data into Elastic Observability. In fact, we support all these different AWS services, CloudWatch, Kinesis, S3, FireLens, to get all the log data that you need into the Elastic environment. And we also have some data collection techniques like the serverless forwarder, which means that you can actually deploy something using a serverless function that can get logs from AWS to Elastic. Or you can use our Elastic agent, which uh, you install on uh, an EC2 instance, for example, which is uh, how I've got it configured in my demo. You can also process data using Logstash. For example, you could store your logs in an S3 bucket, and then you could use Logstash to process the, the data in the S3 bucket and send it to Elastic. So it's quite, it's quite flexible. There's a lot of choice. We like to do observability your way. But don't worry, we can get all of those log files into Elastic. And once you've got it, all those log files into Elastic, we have our AI assistant, which can help you understand, as you can see on the right hand side there, if there are any interesting things happening within your logs. Typically you might find that uh, you, you might get a spike in your log files, for example, where uh, you know you don't know where that spike came from. It could be that somebody's logging into the system with an unauthorized user or a debug user or something, and they install a debug tool, and that causes a, an enormous amount of additional logging, but it's also causing performance issues in your environment. And uh, the AI assistant can help you, as you can see on the right-hand side here, navigate through events like that. It really is a revolution in uh, essentially diagnosing problems. So I'm gonna do you a quick demo and I wanted to just introduce the demo environment. To here, here we've got uh, AWS Cloud. We've got uh, an Amazon API gateway, sending data via AWS Lambda, um, essentially, and then all the telemetry data is going to CloudWatch. We have a, an EC2 instance here with an Elastic Agent on it, collecting CloudWatch data and sending it over here to Elastic Cloud. So, you know, it's pretty simple example, uh, and I can show you that right now. So over here, we've got our, our little Lambda example. And if you refresh here, normally you'll find that it should uh, essentially produce a little hello from Lambda, a Lambda message that you can see here. Uh, but every so often we get an error. So let's uh, talk about how to get the, uh, the logs into Elastic first. So if we go over to here, we can click on observability. And once observability comes up, the way that we get integrations for a CloudWatch so that we can uh, essentially pull this data into Elastic is we go down here on the left hand side and we click on integrations. Now from here, you can see we have 36 different extensions for AWS. So, you know, if it's AWS, we have got you covered, right? Now the one that we're looking for today is CloudWatch because we want to get CloudWatch data into here. So as you can see here, uh, we just need to add this CloudWatch integration. And then what we do is, is we fill this in with our access key and our secret key. We want to uh, essentially down here, we want to make sure that we collect logs from CloudWatch and we put the log group ARN in there, which uh, you'd have to set that up obviously in AWS CloudWatch. But once we've got all of this information fully populated, 
we can save that and away we go. Now we already have two of these configured. So essentially we're pulling from two different CloudWatch ARNs. One is the, the, the API gateway and the other one is the, the Lambda function. So we've actually got two uh, but log logs coming two logs from two different sources coming in through there. So now we we've got the integration installed. We can go into here and we can start to use uh, the logs part of Elastic Observability. And one of the things I want to do is I just want to filter out anything that's not an AWS uh, that's not a log file from my Lambda function. So the way to do this is we want to use event data set and we're going to make sure that we use the generic one. This is the one that I've configured to listen to the Lambda messages, which you can actually see here. So these are all messages that are related to our Lambda function that we talked about over there. I'll go that back a little bit. I'll, I'll get all the data for today. And what we'll do is, is we'll we'll scroll down a little bit and we'll see if we can find any problems in our log files here because we did get a little bit of an issue earlier and I want to make sure yes so it's shut down over here so this isn't good uh, let's have a look shut down what's the problem here okay so we've got a sig term right in a, in the sleep function so let's have a look and see some details about that error. We're going to use our AI assistant, as you can see here, to try and get some information out of here. So what is this message? So this is a log entry from AWS CloudWatch, specifically a Lambda function named Emily test. That's all correct. Log message indicates that Lambda function encountered an error. The error is a SIG term, which is a signal that instructs the process to terminate. This error is typically sent when a system needs to shut down in an orderly manner. This is not expected behavior. So let's have a little look at this and start to talk to the AI assistant about what it thinks could be wrong here. Why might a sleep function fail within our Lambda call here? So, you know, why might a sleep function fail within a Lambda call. And let's see what the uh, the AI system could tell us. However, terminated while sleep was running. So it says the function's execution time exceeded its configured timeout. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? So in Lambda, obviously you set a timeout window and I think ultimately it could quite possibly be because there's a there's a timeout. So, uh, is there a, let's have a look and see if there, is there a log message that might indicate a timeout in a Lambda function I could look for. Let's have a look and see what it says. Yes. Let's task timed out. Okay. So this is interesting. So now, so give me an example of a log message that I could look for a uh, task timed out. So, and then we could set up an alert, right? To uh, notify us if this message appears. That's actually a really good idea. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm just gonna search for that little message in here and see if there's, a, there's one of those task timed out messages to see if uh, it should be quite, uh, quite, here we go. So, yep, I think, I think there is a message in here somewhere that talks about a timeout. What we can do to make this easier is we can actually just search the message uh, field for that task timed out. So let's do that. Oops. See if we can find, there we go. So yes, indeed, exactly like that example that we saw, there is a message here saying that the task timed out. 
So I think uh, that's what our problem is. So all we need to do is we need to go into AWS now, increase the timeout because it's only failing by like a tiny, tiny amount. And then we can get back up and running again. So yeah, we managed to use the AO system to help us analyze an error we were getting with our Lambda function here. It told us that the error could be to do with a timeout. It helped us figure out what other log messages we could look for. And we did that. And then we did indeed find that the Lambda function was uh, was timing out. So that's, uh, so that's all I've got time for today. Thank you very much.